come back again, brothers and sisters. Crazy day today. This reminds me of a more innocent time. We had more liberty, I think, you know, 45, 50 years ago. 50 years ago. Yes, 50 years ago. <laughs> Wasn't this lake, but it was another lake. Over here in Lake Martin. Lake Martin. Somehow or another, I ended up over there camping with my family. We found this place you could uh, camp for free, which you. <laughs> they stopped that for. Uh, they stopped that. But we found this little place where we would camp for free. It, it wasn't <laughs> fenced off, you know. Anyway, that water was a lot clearer in that sloughs. And I found this slough over there, kind of like that one, except the water was crystal clear. And I uh, pulled my boat up in the slough and dropped the anchor. My wife was probably back at the camp with uh, uh at the tent, we had a tent. We, there were some other people there too that were camping for free. <laughs> they were uh, my kind of people. <laughs> people that lived off the fat of the high great land <laughs> were there. Anyway, we I wasn't afraid to leave it at the campsite because I don't know. But anyway, I pulled up in this little slough. And uh, I used to love to go out and just go get real hot in the, in the uh, boat. Just as hot as it can be and then, then fall off over into the water and cool off. Anyway, I went and pulled up in this little slough and dropped my anchor. And uh, fell off into the water and went all the way to the bottom. Turned around and looked up, and you could see the silhouette of the boat and the sky. And I was in about, you know, 15 foot of water at least. You could, but you could see all the way up there, just as clear as can be. I love that. Anyway, I was holding on down there with an anchor rope or something, just to make sure I stayed down. Stayed there as long as I could hold my breath. Then I began to think, you know, what if I, I could just drown here, you know, what if I kept on over my breath? Anyway, I came up, here you see me now. Used to do crazy things back when I was young. Like over at the pavilion at the Callaway Gardens. They had a ski pavilion over there. You can probably see it on television when they have the water ski tournaments. I used to dive off of that, off the top of that thing when I was young. One of the, uh, I used to lifeguard over there at Callaway Gardens in the summertime. One of the, uh, of course, you had to get your instructor badge, a life-saving instructor badge, to a uh, lifeguard over there. Part of the uh, to pass the test, you had to swim all across, had to dog paddle or swim across the lake, you know, in the widest point. And we'd wind up over at the ski pavilion. We did that. I got real tired, but I did it. Swam across that lake. Those are some good memories.
cowboy guards. They had a circus there. Florida, Florida, I think Florida State Circus. So we sneak in there sometime, get in free, and uh, watch the show. They had acrobats and clowns and. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> a lot of this uh, information could be uh, <laughs> stuff that you'd want to tell your grandkids and your kids. So <laughs> the whole world can listen in if they want to, <laughs> these little tales. Been there, I've done that, and I'm just telling you some of the things we've done. Even rode a train one time. We pulled in the yard, and then the conduct the uh, bull said, "Y'all get off when the train starts rolling. Y'all get off." We got off at Las Vegas, Nevada. Climbed up this bank, uh, trying to avoid the railroad authorities, and we got to the top of that bank, and there was a McDonald's. Never seen one before. McDonald's. Uh, restaurant probably one of the first ones in america a mcdonald's restaurant i never seen one before hamburgers about 10 cents you know and the, uh, where you at the little window where you got your hamburger this was in las vegas there was a slot machine <laughs> but while you're waiting on your hamburger you could uh, uh, play the slot machine just some uh, useless, trivial information <laughs> I'm putting out today. They come, uh, like in that song, precious, sacred memories unfold in the stillness of the midnight. Well, it's in midnight, but this is... Uh, uh, a cool, sunny day down here in Alabama. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go to and nothing to do. Nothing to do and plenty of time to do it. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> anyway. Hitchhike all over the country. Brothers and sisters. Beautiful city of Philadelphia. Brother, <laughs> the city of brotherly love. I went there. We should, we lived up there for a while in Philadelphia. Worked there for a little bit. Well, we didn't work there very long. But I just worked in this little factory for a couple of weeks, a few days. The man said, right, "Let's we'll give you your jo uh, this job, but." We, you tell, are y'all transients? Transients, that means that y'all passing through. I said, well, my buddy said, no, we're not transients. No, transients, that means y'all going to be here a while. Well, we, we were transients. We weren't there. You know, we quit after a few days. I was going to leave my paycheck there for those few days because I was so ashamed that we lied to the man. But my buddy went in and got, I made him go in and get the, our paycheck we won but a few days that we worked. That was in Philadelphia. But I wound up working in uh, New Orleans. Wow, New Orleans. The city that care for God. That was a real experience, brothers and sisters. You see that movie, The Half Moon? A Half Moon Restaurant? With the, they have that... I think it's John Claude Van Damme. I'm not sure what movie it was. One of them action kung fu action movies had a had a fight scene there. That's where I would eat sometime. One but a couple of dollars for the biggest seafood platter you've ever seen. Right there in New Orleans, Alabama, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Excuse me.
live there for a while too. That's where I uh, met up with some commies, communists. They were boarding in the house we were boarding in that I lived in. I paid about 20, 20 to twenty-five dollars a month, including utilities. I lived in a house for twenty-five dollars a month, including utilities. I had a room and a little room in a. But it was kind of like the room in streetcars named Desire. One of those big houses, you know, with huge tall windows. Several families lived in them. But no telling what it costs to live down there. Now. But anyway. Wound up back here in Alabama, though, brother. Said there's no place like home. There's no place like it. I was born here. Well, I wasn't born here. I was born in Atlanta, but I was raised here. Most all of my life was. Of my 75 years, except for just a few of them, was right here in this little area in Alabama. It's on the west coast of uh, Georgia, the east coast of Alabama. So I'm kind of a Georgia boy. Just lived in Alabama all my life. Moved back to Alabama because at the time you didn't even need insurance for your car, and you didn't have to have all the. In Georgia, you'd have to have an inspection sticker, which my car would never pass. My cars were uh, tin cans on wheels back then. When somebody had got it all used up, they pass it down to me. I'd wind up with it, keep them going. I lend meaning to the shade tree mechanic. How'd you keep them going? I remember one time I had this, uh, gosh, I can't keep on talking. I'll tell you, I put this in. I had this uh, rambler. And the back wheels would spin. You couldn't get, there was something wrong right there where the, where the axle met the uh, tire, the, the wheel. And there was a key in there and it would break off and you, and you, you, you could, uh, you could put it in first and it'd just spin. The tire wouldn't spin. The, uh, the, the nub would spin, the, the, the part of the inside of it. And I'd get uh, nails and drive them in that thing with a hammer and to ride it. And it would catch and, and pull the car along. Every once in a while, the nails would come out. And uh, so I'd, I kept, uh, what I'd do to keep going is I'd, on the pulling tire, I would drive nails into the side of the thing which made the gear catch, and I dried. I know nobody's ever heard of that, but that's what happened. And then after that wore down, I'd get another nail and keep on going until the whole thing uh, tore up, you know. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's the way I used to look at it. Anyway, I don't know of any more tales I can give you. Oh, except for that same car. Let me tell you, I've got just one minute. Somebody pushed it off on a pile of beer cans one night that we were gone. Uh, we left it, left it at this bar, and uh, somebody pushed it off on, on a pile of tin cans. But it didn't hurt it even a least little bit because uh, those tin cans cushioned the, uh, <laughs> they just collapsed and didn't hurt it. So uh, that's just another story. Peace and love, Miss Old Boy down here in Alabama.